And welcome everybody to the Daily Space Weather. We'll be looking at the sun. And the solar activity or lack thereof. In today's video. The southern hemisphere is where all the action or lack thereof is happening. Sunspot 2904 has degraded to plage. We're at zero sunspots, folks. Zero sunspots. Is it a grand solar minimum? Leave us a comment. Let us know what you think. Here's a close-up of Sunspot 2904. Again, it has degraded since yesterday. It's not even a sunspot anymore. It was during the first part of the video. Now it's got no umbrae. So here you can see it degrading in colorized magnetogram. And at the moment, no other areas of magnetic organization happening at all. Here it is in some more wavelengths. It's 171 angstroms. And here's 131. How low will the solar radio flux go, folks? How, how low will the 10.7 centimeter radio flux go? It's at 79 at the moment. And for you new viewers, the radio flux is the most proportional data set to sunspot number. So there's the radio flux over the last year. The black line's the radio flux, the red line is the sunspot number. And check it out, it's fallen off a cliff, dropping all the way back down to zero, as it did before the last major peak. Sunspot number dropped way down to zero right before that again. So here's a space weather enthusiast dashboard. No geomagnetic storms or unrest in the forecast. As far as global seismicity goes, there was a 5.2, about 150 miles off the coast of Oregon. There's a location of that quake. There were some foreshocks and aftershocks there as well. And that came in uh, early this morning, actually, around 10.50 universal time. So just a couple of hours before we did our show prep, that large, significant quake, 5.2 magnitude, came in. Looks like the largest quake of the past 24 hours was a 5.8 at the South Sandwich Islands region, so that continues to shake down there. Wondering if those are foreshocks over the past couple of months, actually. There was a 5.2 at Indonesia, a 5.3 at Venezuela. Over the past 24, there was a 5.1 there as well. A 5.0 it struck Papua New Guinea. Oh, there was a 5.5 off the coast of Oregon. Actually, two of them. About a half an hour apart. Check it out, a 5.5. And then a half hour later, another 5.5. And then a series of aftershocks there. A couple of 5.8s. So that's some major activity, folks. Uh, yeah, that's... Pretty interesting, to say the least. A 5.8 there, just after midnight universal time. A 5.8 about an hour and a half later at 121 universal time. So this, the most significantly seismic active region on the planet is indeed about 150 miles off the coast of Oregon. Let's hope those aren't foreshocks. Remember, folks, any earthquake could be a foreshock. You never know. You could have an 8-magnitude quake as a foreshock to a 9-magnitude quake. You just never know. It looks like a quake came in as we did the live stream here. Check it out. Also, some deep quakes at Fiji coming in. So a bit of an uptick here in seismic activity, including while we live stream the video. Another deep quake at Fiji. And this one just came in here while we did the live stream. That's a 5.1 there, so. Seismic uptick at the moment, and it's close to home, just off the coast of Oregon. Which volcanoes are erupting? Well, La Palma has upticked. It's 
produced a 13,000 foot plume of volcanic ash and a bunch of new real estate. We talk about it regularly. This, this video is going to include some direct information about it. It has produced an additional 48 hectares of land with its new lava delta. Semaru produced a pyroclastic flow, a reason to not be on the lower slopes of a volcano. About a 12,000 foot ash plume there over the Indonesian Isle of East Java. Kilauea, as I sort of forecasted here, there's been some flooding happening on the Big Island and indeed some upticks there in the activity. We call them phreatic eruptions. It's when steam blasts out from rock and it creates a violent situation when you have a lot of flooding and lava lakes and so on, as you can imagine. Steam is pretty powerful. Fuego exploding as well, 14,000 foot ash plume over Guatemala. Nevado del Ruiz volcanic ash dispersed according to satellite imagery. Sangay exploding. 20,000 foot ash plume there from Sangay. Revenador, 14,000 foot ash plume as Revenador explodes. Sabancaya exploding, 24,000 foot ash plume from Sabancaya. It's located in Peru and Nevado de Chilean is a reminder to not pull vault the caldera as it explodes. It's producing a 14,000 foot plume of volcanic ash and intermittent emissions. Let's take a look at magnetometer data here as stars are largely governed by their magnetic fields or their are their magnetic fields governed by the stars i think it's probably an interaction between their external environment and their internal features anyway there's the ghost magnetometer over the past three days and you can see quite a bit of maneuvering happening there those arc jet moments are when the goes 16 and 17 turn on their thrusters to maintain their geosynchronous near equatorial orbits. It produces plasma which can affect the magnetometer readings. Next some readings here from stereo A, B, and 51 ground-based magnetometers. It's the top view ecliptic plane field plot, part of the National Sunspot Observatory. This is one of the most important series of images that we'll show. And Earth is just solidly in a south pole current sheet shown here in red. Here's a line of sight view of the same data. Also shows you the solar magnetogram. Again, we are back to zero sunspots, folks. Next, the line of sight coronal hole plot. Some south pole oriented coronal holes about to rotate into the earth facing zone here. And before we continue that, the Smash News Network least busted name and news, I need to check the life of the stream. So thanks for leaving comments, Tin Man 1057 and Red Split Rail Fence. Stream looks good. Let's get back. Two 193 Angstrom's SDO imagery here. You can see some coronal holes in the south there. Most important ones are these rotating in. Cycle 25, it's progressing slowly. It's going to break out all of a sudden. Likelihood of solar flares quite low. As a result of the degradation of sunspot 2904, it was the only sunspot on the solar disk. The, the Earth-facing portion of the solar disk, at least. And indeed, it is now decayed to plage. Likelihood of solar flares quite low here. Just a sort of a baseline level. I would recommend all of our viewers check out our homepage. Click our links if you'd like to support the channel. If you like the content and you'd like to see it to continue to exist and remain publicly visible and free for all to view, please become a member of the Smash team or pick up some merch. There are all kinds of other links to help us out below the video. We would also remind you to forgive, remember, and hold accountable. And this, you can find this on our merch link here on the homepage, Smasho Merch. We'll send you to the Red Bubble Shop. Thanks everybody who's picked up merch. The print quality is quite high. Let's just say that. Once again, do not pull Vault to Caldera. Make Earth not suck again. 
It's up to you, not giant heaving bureaucracies that can't even do their own jobs. Here's a sneak peek of what goes on at smashamash.com slash smash team. And how low will the 10.7 centimeter radio flux go? Will it go below 79? Will we see no sunspots soon? Leave us a forecast in the comments. Next, the flare profile over the past three days. No major flares. Just a C-class intensification back on the 6th. No spikes in the proton flux. Next, the real-time solar wind. To see pretty unremarkable solar wind over the past 24 hours as well. Current conditions are density at 4.23 protons per cubic centimeter. Solar wind speed 418 kilometers per second. Pretty boring when it comes to solar wind at the moment. KP index at 2. It's geomagnetic calm conditions. Here's the magnetohydrodynamic pressure over the past four hours. Where it's likely to be, according to the space weather modeling framework. If you want to read about that, click on details on this geospace magnetosphere movie page. And if you click on details, you will find what the space weather modeling framework consists of. Check it out, there's an echo. Next, the uh, ground magnetic perturbations here showing changes to Earth's B field on the ground level. Oh my god, no major changes. No major surprises to our regular viewers. We'll let it play through since it refreshed. We do not edit these videos. By the way, this was originally streamed live to Twitch at twitch.tv slash smashomash. Check us out all over social media. Share on your favorite or perhaps your most hated social media. Next, here's a diagram of the solar system. We're going to do a one-week forecast. There's where things will be in a week approaching another full moon. Six days before the solstice on 12-15. It'll be a gibbous waxing. Next, a star chart showing the ecliptic and the galactic plane. The galactic plane's the blue line. And the ecliptic is the yellow line. We've got Mars, the Sun, and Mercury up there over Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania at the moment. And let's take a look at the coronal mass ejection scenario. There still is a possibility for coronal mass ejections, especially on the far side of the Sun. We're going to keep our coronal mass ejection watch in place. It's a perfect example of not requiring sunspots or solar flares to have coronal mass ejections. So we're still anticipating some more of them here, both on the far side and the Earth side of the sun. You can see over on stereo A there are some large plumes of plasma here. The Lasco C3 showing Mercury, and those are located at L5 and L1 respectively. Stereo A at L5, Lagrange 0.5 and the Soho Lasco C3 at L1, right between the Earth and Sun. No Earth-facing coronal mass ejections at the moment, according to available coronagraph imagery. Today's cosmology segment is canceled. We're just going to skip it entirely. Because frankly, my dear, I don't give a damn. Actually, we are going to show the astronomy picture of the day which you may appreciate. It's not half bad. And it's Comet Hale Bop from 1997. And what's interesting about this, folks, is that Comet Hale Bop has two tails. And this isn't all that uncommon. This blue tail here, this is the ion tail. That's caused by the solar wind. And this is the dust tail caused by sunlight. So two different tails on Comet Hale-Bopp. It was quite a spectacular comet and quite huge if I remember correctly back in 1997. It's as old as my cycling career. Comet Hale-Bopp over Italy. The Valparola Pass. 
Don't forget to check our playlists. There are hundreds of cosmology segments which may amaze and astound you. Let's take a look at charging hazards. We don't have any. Let's take a look at the electron flux. Here it is over the past year. Excuse me. All right. And here is the electron flux over the past three days. We briefly got into warning levels here yesterday. At least the GO-17 did. Just at moderate levels here. Nothing too exciting happening when it comes to space weather today. There is the forecast. And we're expecting flat levels here. I don't disagree with NOAA's forecast at the moment. Next, the total electron content forecast. It's the electrons between your GPS satellite and your handset. GPS satellites orbit geosynchronously at about 12,500 miles of altitude. And there are lots of electrons sometimes in between that satellite and your handset. Those can cause errors. And that's what you're seeing here, the total electron content forecast. We're also going to show you the F ionosphere layer. Here's the diagram of electromagnetic penetration and temperatures and so on. And before we do that, let's check the life of the stream once again here. Once again, thanks for leaving comments, Tin Man 1057 and Red Split Rail Fence. So here's the ionosphere in vibrational frequency. We are certainly seeing some high frequency anomalies in the southern hemisphere. Those will be more common than in the northern hemisphere as it's approaching summer, the summer solstice. Yes, you in the southern hemisphere, the sun is going to be as high as it gets in the sky in just a couple of weeks. And let's bring up the anomaly map. Here's anomaly in megahertz from the 30-day median. Quite a bit of low frequency anomalies around the equator. And some swings to low frequency to high frequency anomalies around Antarctica. Again, it's showing you anomaly in megahertz from the 30-day median, vibrational frequency of the ionosphere. The data is courtesy of Australian Government Bureau of Meteorology. Here's the latest image, 1345 Universal Time Ionogram and 1345 Universal Time Anomalygram. We can see some anomalies right at the moment here over northern Africa, the Middle East, and Central Africa. They are moving into the uh, Central Atlantic Ocean. Have you seen our meteorology segments? They're pretty sweet. And we're going to be streaming one right after this video. Let's move into our bonus features. Starting with a ground-based solar observatory. So we're going to start with Cerro Tololo, located in Chile. And here is that ground-based solar observatory. We do see some filaments down here in the south. There are certainly some filaments in the north as well. Again, coronal mass ejection watch in place regardless of a lack of sunspots. Here's the GO-16 SUVI. It's got a wide field of view. It's very good at showing coronal mass ejections. A little better than the SDO because all of this space is available as part of the view for prominences. The GO-16 SUVI, 304 Angstrom's view. We stream it regularly here on Twitch. And here's the latest intensity gram to show you no umbrae. There are no umbrae down there. There are no umbrae on the Earth-facing portion of the disk period. There's the latest magnetogram. And again, no areas of highly organized magnetic field a.k.a. no sunspots. And we'll close out with a couple full disk images here. Here's 94 angstroms. You'll see the degradation of sunspot 2904. And last but not least, 304 angstroms. Thanks for tuning in, folks. Remember to stare at the sun. 
View our playlists and our other videos. Please click the links and support the channel as we're paid just this side of nothing to put the videos on YouTube. I don't know if we should thank the algorithms or maybe the content just sucks. Let us know in the comments. How low will the radio flux go? That's the question that we're wondering. Where will the next sunspot appear? If you've got a forecast, let us know in the comments. And may that solar wind be at your back. Opinions expressed in this video, not necessarily the opinions of Smash News Network, least busted, name and news.